Hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Gold Newsletter. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the Ed JR Mining Guy on Twitter and your co-host for today. This is the first time we're doing this, and I'm extremely excited to welcome Brian London here with me. Brian, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Kai. Yeah, let's see how this works with both of us on here. Absolutely. Yeah, because we've got a fantastic discussion lined up. I'm pretty sure of it because we just had the pleasure of speaking with our guest uh, before hitting the record button. And it's none other than Ira Thomas. She's the new chairperson, chairwoman, chairman over at uh, West Haven Gold. And we're really excited to catch up with her because uh, the company is actively uh, working the Shovel Nose project, just received some drill permits. And uh, from what I understand, uh, they're about to drill very soon. Brian, I'm sure you're excited as well. Yeah, I really am. This is an interesting play. You know, this market has provided a lot of extraordinary opportunities. Uh, companies that have big resources, identified resources, sometimes economic supply to them, that are trading at, at really small fractions of where they'd be trading in uh, a, just a normal market. And I think that, that West Haven is a prime example of that. And we'll get into it in a little bit. But uh, the value of this company already identified through economics is just much, much larger on the order of 10 times larger than what its market cap currently is. So I'm really excited to uh, to explore that with the company's new chairman, who is so highly regarded in the industry. Absolutely. No, we're, we're going to dive right in. Let us add Ira in here on the channel. And uh, Ira, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, congratulations on being appointed, of course, chair, chairwoman, chairman. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for making the time. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm delighted to be here with you both. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and uh, again, a bit of a guinea pig, I have to admit as well, because we're trying this out with the two of us for the first time. So, um, but let's let's dive right in. And uh, Brian gave a little bit of an intro, but uh, we always like our guests to do a bit of an introduction to the company so that we're all sort of on the same level before we dive into a bit of a deeper discussion here. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm really delighted to be able to um, update um, your viewers on West Haven Gold. Uh, this is a company that's been actively exploring the Spences Bridge Gold Belt in uh, South Central British Columbia. It's an incredibly well-located historical gold belt um, where you had placer mining um, back in, in the 1850s. And fast forward to uh, modern day um, uh, sort of uh, exploration of the Spences uh, Bridge Gold Belt, West Haven has assembled um, a really enviable package. It consists of four primary projects, Shovel Nose, Prospect Valley, Skunka Creek, and Skunka North. And these are really following up on some of the exciting historical results from the belt where the primary source rock of this placer gold has really never been identified. So all told, we have about 37,000 hectares of prospective land. And the project that's really anchoring this um, prospective land package is Shovel Nose. And we have it advanced our efforts at Shovel Nose to the point where we actually have completed a PEA on one of the uh, zones that was uh, first identified in 2018. And that has uh, determined that we have uh, quite an exciting prospect of in front of us with, with just South Zone, but the expiration potential in the belt is, is, uh, is really uh, completely open at this stage. No, fantastic. Really appreciate that introduction. Really comprehensive overview. We're going to dive into some details, obviously, of the PA here as well. Um, but just to sort of give us the whole holistic picture here of West Haven, I always like asking about the capital structure sort of as the next question here um, so that we know, OK, this is where the company's headed. This is potential overhangs. This is how well they're financed. Um, yeah. Ira, can you give us an overview there? Sure. And, you know, one of the things that I think um, West Haven has done particularly well is, you know, through challenging um, it's challenging times for the junior explorers as it's managed its share structure extremely um, efficiently. There's about 140 million shares outstanding at this stage, fully diluted, just under 150 million. The market cap of the company is sitting at around uh, just under 30 million. Uh, they do have cash on hand. And we have recently announced a, a, a flow through financing, which we uh, did a first closing on earlier this week, which will uh, contribute another one and a just 1.6 million dollars uh, into the company coffers. 
And that's going to allow us to launch full speed into our latest drill campaign, which is set to begin uh, March 18th. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. That's already a few days from now. So yep. uh, f f full full steam ahead here. Fantastic. Um, Ira, just quickly to run us maybe a bit through the largest shareholders as well, because one of the questions I asked you before hitting the record button, how are you involved? Yeah, so listen, this has been um, a, a big family effort. Um, this company was started by my brother, Gareth Thomas, and supported uh, by my father and I since uh, inception. Uh, so altogether, family and friends control about 10%. We've got about 25% institutionally held, and then um, about 39% retail. And all told, our directors and officers account for about 26%. So, you know, we're heavily vested. Um, I was super excited to have the opportunity to step in and, and support the company. Um, recently joining as chairman, and it remains one of my largest single personal investments um, in the mining space. Absolutely. No, I appreciate that, uh, Ira. Uh, thanks for clarifying that. And uh, I, I think it's an obvious question to ask, or actually it's a question that I, I think I know the answer to, since you somewhat answered it already. But uh, you recently joined uh, the company board as, as, as chair, chairman. The question is, of course, like what attracted you to it? I know your brother is running it, of course, so it is a family affair, but uh, there must have been other circumstances as well, because I know brotherly love only goes that far. Well, listen, I, I think um, I've had the opportunity to to kind of get stuck in and, and up to speed on some of the, the technical achievements of the company over the last several years. And again, I, I really want to stress um, uh, you know, not, not just the involvement of my brother, but the team that he's assembled. It's a, it's a top notch team with a uh, great exploration, uh, pedigree and, and, you know, history of, of success in the past with Peter Fischel on the technical side, but also a very accomplished team of, of geologists and geoscientists that are leading the charge there. They've been lean and mean, um, o over six years, which is, which is, you know, been kind of the mantra. Uh, of course, being so well located right off a highway, it means you can cost effectively explore in the Spences Bridge Gold Belt very, very um, effectively all year round. And so they've really been able to put those dollars to work. And so I was incredibly impressed, not only at the work that they've done in the South Zone to actually identify a really attractive economic opportunity, uh, but also within uh, the, the whole belt itself. And, and so, you know, I, I think we're just really scratching the surface here. I think that's probably one of my main messages today. I think the company has been incredibly disciplined and in and, and, and progressing uh, the project through to this stage. Um, but I think, you know, as we see this disconnect between gold price and the junior equities, I really believe this has to change. And when it does, I think this particular belt, this particular opportunity and this particular company are, are really going to attract a lot of attention. And I think what impresses me most is just their ability to keep their heads down, um, get, you, you know, the, 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 the drills uh, turning and to make significant progress, even in a, even in a down market. So Lots to do here yet, but really done a great job to this point. But I think it's the world class potential of the whole belt that is that's most uh, intrigued me. Ira, you know, you, you mentioned the uh, getting attention and attention that West Haven should deserve. Uh, what strikes me about the play is is really the market's inattention, not just to West Haven, but a lot of companies yeah. out there over the recent years that have built big resources and significant resources. You know, you made the uh, the big discovery at the South Zone in 2018. And at that point, the market started looking to, OK, what's the next thing along the, the trend? What's the next big hit? Can you repeat that South Zone? And the market's reaction has been really distracted. And I don't think it has really appreciated the fact that you've gotten equal or better hits along a number of zones down that trend. Could you kind of explain that development to us and, and what the market may have overlooked? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a really good point. I think the fact that, you know, we identified, um, you know, a relatively small high value resource in the South Zone that's not even about 600,000 ounces. 
was interesting, but then when that didn't grow immediately to three or four million ounces, the market kind of lost interest. But you're absolutely right. We've done so much work, kind of a long trend from the south zone where we've identified some really high grade, high grade uh, interesting intercepts. And of course, we are continuing to, to, to build ounces in these areas. And what is going to be really important for this project, and I think what investors need to understand, is that this is not the middle of the Arctic. You know, we are right off a main highway in southern British Columbia. We've got a power line just to the north of, 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 of the shovel nose block. So, you know, the threshold for, for development here is much lower. There's also infrastructure kind of, you know, in the in the belt itself. So you know, I think um, that is not clearly understood. And as we continue to um, test targets, kind of a long trend from the south zone uh, within the shovel nose project and even within some of the other projects, uh, we are going to be building ounces and we can build them quickly. And, and you know, hopefully we'll be in a gold market that will uh, start to take uh, notice because I, I do think this is a huge opportunity. You know, at the at the at the mix zone, we had you know, close to four meters of 17 grams and 31 grams, including one and a half meters of, you know, 28 grams. These, these are important high grade intercepts that really speak to the, the, the world class potential of the belt. There's lots of room in here yet, um, as, as you both will understand, you know, epithermal deposits, um, you know, can be challenging. Uh, there's limited, you know, outcrop exposure here. But again, the technical team has done a great job kind of um, really understanding uh, the potential uh, of these of these ore deposits. And, and we're building upon that and prioritizing targets now for 2024. And one of the one of the lenses that we've just recently kind of added um, is, is the perspective you know, of a, a structure. We, we brought in recently some, some very well-regarded structural um, experts who have taken a look at the work that we've done to date and, and really added to that. And a number of the priority targets that we'll be drilling starting next week uh, will include some of um, these exciting new targets that we've, uh, that we've added into the mix. Where, where can we expect those targets to be like along along that trend? Can you give us a rough idea? Like, have you announced anything in that regard yet? I don't know. So that it's a tricky question because I know I haven't seen a drill update or like a drill plan or anything yet. Yeah, no, we haven't. So I, I will maybe <laughs> stay away from commenting too much on that. But what I would say is that we are targeting a range of opportunities. Um, and so a different, you know, I think it's it's really about taking you know, what the team perceives is to be the best possible untested targets um, within uh, the shovel nose property. And, and again, being extremely disciplined about um, what we're testing and, and why. Uh, some of it will to be to build on, on, on recent success, but some of it will be to test interesting, you know, ideas um, within the structural analysis that could add significantly um, to our understanding and, and the and, and the discoveries to date, so it's it's going to be a range of targets, um, and you'll hear more from from Gareth and the team here in the in the coming weeks. No, oh, fantastic! Yeah, by the way, on, on a side note, on on the point of access, I've taken my family to Shovel Nose. So, oh, great! Uh, did, we we made a trip. I think it was in uh, the summer of 2021. Uh, we we drove up and uh, saw a drill from a distance and everything. It was fantastic. So super easy access. Made a day trip out of it. Went to Hope and uh, just just showcasing how easy it is to get there. Right. You know, and I think that's that's the thing that most people. It, I, you know, we do really encourage um, you, you know our larger investors or prospective investors just to come and see because I think it 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 really does highlight um, how different an opportunity th this is compared to most, you know, Canadian uh, exploration uh, projects that are out there, whether they be BC or Yukon or, or, or the North or anywhere in Ontario. I mean, you know, we really do have incredible access and great infrastructure. 
Absolutely. Um, I, I want to work out a bit more, like, uh, what, what do you get when you buy into a 30 million market cap company right now? Like, what ha what has it been invested? And what is sort of tangible? I know you put out a PEA, there's a resource, but maybe summarize that a little bit for us, because you talked a bit about the upside and, and target drilling, but there's a lot of substance already in the company at 30 million market cap. So I'm curious what, what, what that is, and maybe run us through some highlights also of the PEA. Yeah, listen, I think the reason, you know, the company felt so, um, you know, compelled to kind of move forward with the PEA is that we really did want to send a strong message that, um, you know, this is a company that's committed to identifying a monable resource and that we think the threshold for development in this area is, is going to be significantly lower than in other areas. And I think the PEA does a, a really great job in highlighting that. You know, we have got a strong case for an underground mining scenario in the south zone. It gives us a pre-tax IRR of around, you know, 40 percent uh, after tax of, of just over 32 percent. The CapEx is really manageable at around 150 million. And it overall provides us with a low cost, all in sustaining cost of, you know, around 750 uh, gold equivalent ounces. So. Uh, you know, it, it's not a huge resource at this stage. We've got a total payable metals of 534,000 ounces, but it really highlights the fact that, you know, you don't need 5 million ounces in this area. You don't need that kind of scale in order to be economic. So we absolutely believe we can add to those ounces kind of uh, a long trend um, within the shovel nose project it, it itself. And, you know, we re remain very optimistic about the potential for further world class, larger gold um, opportunities within the belt as well. So I, I think the PEA just, again, is, is kind of scratching the surface of the potential of the belt, but it also really highlights um, the opportunity uh, within uh, a, a project area that is so well situated. Um, yeah, ahead, honestly, right. you, know, uh, it, you are literally scratching the surface here. If you look at the south zone drill intersections, and I'm looking at it right now in your presentation, you have a number of uh, targets and zones that have met or beaten the, the best results from the south zone. So yeah. I'm intrigued in that, that aspect to begin with. But you're mentioning that you have other targets, so you have the potential to discover new zones here that uh, that could yield this kind of typical high grade results that you've been getting? Absolutely. And, you know, we're looking at, you know, within the existing kind of identified zones like MIC, but we're also looking at, at targets southwest of FMN. We've got line six, we've got a target called Breccia two. Um, we've got uh, hydrothermal Breccia five. These are, these are, um, you know, relatively untested zones kind of within the trend that we think could be equal or, or even better. Uh, so there's a lot to do here. And I think the challenge, you know, for West Haven is, is not to come and to come up with targets. It's been about how to spend money wisely and, and be able to come back to the market um, and, 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 and preserve share structure and not, and not dilute kind of our loyal supporters that have been following the company since 2018. And that's something that, you know, the team has been very cognizant of. I, I think you could easily have, you know, thrown 15 drills at, um, at Shovel Nose alone uh, to follow up on some of the exciting targets that have been developed. But again, each and every hole that has been planned is really been planned to, you know, answer questions, to increase our knowledge and understanding of the geology, you know, within the trend, within the belt that will, you know, lead us to, um, you know, other, uh, other opportunities and hopefully grow ounces in a really meaningful way. Uh, so, you know, we, as much as we really, um, I think, you know, value the, the South Zone and what it's contributed so far, uh, we still remain convinced that there is potential for uh, larger, um, uh, you know, high grade uh, discoveries with, within the belt. And our, our mandate here now is to be very disciplined in putting those uh, new flow through dollars to work to kind of test the best uh, within that trend 
any one of those could really, um, you know, change the outlook. And as you pointed out, Brian, there are some exceptional uh, results already uh, that have given us uh, areas of focus to, to help build uh, future ounces. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. Lots, lots of opportunity there. Um, Ira, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be redundant or anything, but, uh, you know, I would just to summarize maybe the plans for 2024, like the business plan as well. Like, what are you trying to achieve? Is it a, a resource upgrade or resource update by the end of the year? Is it an update PA by the end of the year? I uh, don't want to put words in your mouth, obviously, but that's sort of where the, the question is uh, sort of directed at. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question. Look, we are continuing to um, you know build uh, resources based on the drilling to date, and there's there's certainly opportunity to do that. But equally important, uh, we were we're getting out there to to test uh, some of the best targets uh, within the belt uh, to make sure that you you know when we you know as much as I want to say we're focusing on 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 building ounces in the south zone we feel equally excited about the expiration upside. So it's really, it's really kind of good. that strategy, I think is, is, is kind of a, a twofold strategy, if you like, continue to build ounces um, and build on the, on the drilling work that's been done to date within um, the shovel nose properly at large, and then make sure uh, that we're, we're leaving no stone unturned, as as you would say, to test the best possible targets um, that could be a game changer for us uh, within the property at large. No, I appreciate that. Awesome. Uh, I, I was fishing a little bit for a date for a resource update or so, uh, or a bit of a guidance uh, guidance in, in that regard. So, um, But uh, it makes sense. First, you got to drill, of course, and then you probably find out uh, what, what you have and what you found to add it to the resource. So, um, Brian, I see you unmuted yourself. Do you have a question? No, I was just <laughs> listening to you, Kai. Listening to you, I just think it's a, a, a wonderful story. It's 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 kind of typical of what this market is offering up to investors right now. But it's atypical in that you've got a really a world class discovery already in the bag, a firm foundation to build upon, and identified targets along that trend. I, I think it's also important to note that there was big news in the granting of a drill permit that gets you something like 650 uh, 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 holes now permitted for. So so money and permits and, uh, and the trend of high grade discoveries. I don't know what more you could want for. No, thank you, Brian. That's a really good point. I should have mentioned that, but yeah, that, that permit has been absolutely uh, critical. And, you know, West Haven continues to work very closely within our communities of, of interest to kind of bring them along in our journey. And we do um, enjoy good support um, within the belt and the, and the group of projects. So we're excited to be uh, able to, to kind of move forward now and, and, and test some of those, those better opportunities that to date we, uh, we actually haven't had permits uh, to do so. Fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, Ira, last question. Uh, you know, we're always greedy as shareholders and uh, in investors. We always want to see when the next press release comes out. Ideally, it's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you hinted at the start of, of drilling here very, very soon. Is that the next? I'm guessing that's the next news item. And then uh, what do yeah. you expect in terms of turnaround maybe from the labs as well? Have they hinted at anything? Yeah, listen, we're, we're anticipating. I mean, we're, we're getting, you know, a pretty early start here. Um, it's easy when you're located where we are. We, you know, can basically drill all year round. But um, we have had a big dump of snow in British Columbia over the last few days, which has slowed us down a little bit. Uh, but the the drills are are, you know, basically everything is in place to to begin. Uh, very shortly, and our understanding is that uh, right now the turnaround from the labs is 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 pretty manageable. So we'll see as we get into it, um, but you will be seeing regular updates from the West Haven team um, on our progress with uh, this spring campaign. And as I said, we're we're excited to to get in and, and test some of our our top targets to date and some newly identified targets um, from this recent structural analysis. So so stay tuned. No, fantastic. Awesome. Ira, thank you so much for your time. I think it was a fantastic introduction, you know, to, to West Haven. It's great to introduce you also to, to, to our audience here as well. And uh, we, we'll make sure, we'll have to make sure to get you back uh, as soon as I'm draw was also keep rolling in. I'd be delighted to come back. Thank you again for the invitation. 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, let me do a bit of an outro here as well. Uh, pl please stay on for just another second here, Ira. Um, I'm just going to remove you real quick. But uh, everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in to the Gold Newsletter. This was a bit of a special edition. Of course, we did a company introduction here with uh, Ira Thomas of West Haven Gold. Uh, but I've been joined by Brian Lennon. It's the first time we've done it together. I think we need to do more of those, Brian. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I get to sit back and let you listen to you talk and just chime in. Absolutely. No, next time we'll do a role reversal. We'll, we'll, we'll you know. <clears throat> I don't know about that. I don't like that. I'm liking this. Uh, absolutely. No, we, we'll have to do more of those. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure to leave a comment, leave a like. Did we ask the right questions? Because uh, we were doing this for you. Of course, it's fun to chat with Brian and with Ira, but uh, make sure you know that you get your questions answered. That's the whole point. That's why we're doing this, of course, as well. And uh, please share the video with like-minded investors and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate you tuning in. Of course, we'll be back with lots, lots more updates here on the Gold Newsletter channel. Thank you so much for joining us.